Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton, and soon we're going to finish up our discussion on more trigonometric graphs. So in the previous video we talked about how to analyze the graph of the tangent and cotangent functions, and we also talked about how to use transformations to graph variations of the tangent and cotangent functions. In this video we're going to talk about how to analyze the graph of the secant and cosecant functions, and how to use transformations to graph variations of the secant and cosecant functions. So let's talk about the graphs of the secant and the cosecant function. The cosecant function actually is obtained by taking the reciprocal of the y coordinates on the points of the graph of the sine function, because the cosecant function is the reciprocal of the sine function. And for the same reason, the secant function is obtained by taking the reciprocal of the points on the graph of the cosine function, because secant is the reciprocal of the cosine function. And so we have the graphs of the cosecant and secant functions are provided below. So the graph that's on the left is the cosecant function, y equals cosecant of x. And recall that the cosecant function is the reciprocal of the sine function. So in other words, the cosecant function, y equals cosecant of x, is really the same function as 1 divided by sine of x. So to actually graph the cosecant function actually helps to understand what is the graph of the sine function and then take reciprocals of those values. So let's start with the sine function, y equals sine of x, which is the graph that's in blue. And remember that the sine function actually starts at 0, 0, and actually completes one complete period to 2 pi, radians. And so you have 2 pi comma 0 as well. Notice that x equals pi over 2, the sine was equal to 1, because sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1. And also at 3 pi over 2, sine of 3 pi over 2 is equal to negative 1. So the highest y value that the sine function obtains was 1, and the lowest y value that the sine function obtains was equal to negative 1. And the graph of the sine function has x-intercepts at x equals 0, x equals pi, and x equals 2 pi. Now let's talk about the reciprocals to actually graph the cosecant function. Well, if you take the reciprocal of this output value, which is 0 for the sine function, the reciprocal of 0 would be undefined. And so that means we actually have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0, or the y-axis, for the cosecant function. And for the same reason, and for the same reason, if you have x equals pi is actually an x-intercept for the sine function, the reciprocal of this output value, the reciprocal of 0, would actually be undefined. And so the cosecant function actually has a vertical asymptote at x equals pi, and for the same reason, also at x equals 2 pi. And so the cosecant function will have vertical asymptotes of the form x equals k times pi, where k is an integer. Every multiple of pi, there will be a vertical asymptote for the cosecant function. And since the period of the sine function is 2 pi radians, we can actually graph the cosecant function also within 2 pi radians. And so this is what the graph of the cosecant function will actually look like. If you take y coordinates that are really close to zero and you find out the reciprocal, they're going to be very large y values or output values. And so the graph will actually increase without bound the closer and closer you get to x equals zero, which is a vertical asymptote for the cosecant function. So the graph will increase without bound on the right side of x equals zero. And for the same reason, the graph will increase without bound as you get closer and closer to x equals pi from the left side because that's also a vertical asymptote for the cosecant function. However, the closer you get to x equals pi over 2, the sine function of pi over 2 was equal to 1. The reciprocal of 1 is 1, and so the cosecant of pi over 2 is also 1. And so the graph will actually go no lower than y equals 1 in terms of this graph between x equals 0 and x equals pi. The graph will increase without bound on the right side of x equals 0, which is a vertical asymptote. The graph will increase without bound on the left side of x equals pi, which is also a vertical asymptote. And the graph will go no lower than y equals 1 which occurs at x equals pi over 2. And since the sine function actually is positive between x equals 0 and x equals pi, the cosecant function will also be positive values between x equals 0 and x equals pi. So now let's talk about the graph of the cosecant function between x equals pi and x equals 2 pi. Notice that the sine function between x equals pi and x equals 2 pi, which is in quadrants 3 and 4, would actually give you negative values for the sine function, so it's below the x-axis. Well, the reciprocal of a value that's negative will also be negative, so the cosecant function will also be below the x-axis between x equals pi and x equals 2 pi. The difference is, is that if you actually take the reciprocal of a value that's negative that's really close to zero, the value will actually get really close to negative infinity. So the cosecant function will actually decrease without bound on the right side of x equals pi, and for the same reason, on the left side of x equals 2 pi, the other vertical asymptote, the graph for the cosecant function will actually decrease without bound as well. And since sine of 3 pi over 2 is equal to negative 1, the reciprocal of negative 1 is also negative 1. And so cosecant of 3 pi over 2 is also negative 1. So the graph will go no higher between x equals pi and x equals 2 pi than y equals negative 1. So the graph will decrease without bound on the right side of x equals pi. It'll decrease without bound on the left side of x equals 2 pi. And the graph will go no higher than y equals negative 1 which occurs at x equals 3 pi over 2. And so this gives you a graph of the cosecant function y equals cosecant of x. Its period is 2 pi radians, so there will be this same pattern every 2 pi radians as you continue to the right and also as you continue to the left. So this was the graph of the cosecant function y equals cosecant of x. Now let's talk about the graph of the secant function. So the graph of the secant function y equals secant of x, recall that the secant function is actually the reciprocal of the cosine function. So in other words, y equals secant of x is really the same function as 1 divided by cosine of x. 
So for this reason, it's very helpful to actually graph the secant function based on the cosine function's graph. So here's the graph of the cosine function, y equals cosine of x. The graph starts at 0, 1. It actually completes one complete period after 2 pi radians. So it would be 0, 1 and also 2 pi, 1 for the cosine function. The cosine function is 0 at pi over 2, because cosine of pi over 2 is 0, and also cosine of 3 pi over 2 is also 0. The graph will go no lower than y equals negative 1, which occurs whenever x is equal to pi, because cosine of pi is equal to negative 1. And so for the same reason that we had vertical asymptotes in the graph of the cosecant function, we'll actually have vertical asymptotes for the graph of the secant function as well. Notice that the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. The reciprocal of 0 is undefined. And so that means you have x equals pi over 2 is a vertical asymptote for the secant function. And for the same reason, x equals 3 pi over 2 is also a vertical asymptote for the secant function. So vertical asymptotes for the secant function will be of the form x equals k pi divided by 2, where k is an odd integer, because it looks like it's at 1 pi over 2, and x equals 3 pi over 2, and so on. Every k pi over 2, where k is an odd integer, you'll have a vertical asymptote as you continue to the right, and also as you continue to the left. Since the period of the cosine function is 2 pi radians, the period of the secant function is also 2 pi radians. So we'll find out what is the pattern that's going to be continuing forever as you go to the right and as you go to the left for the secant function between 0 and 2 pi. So let's start at 0, 1. The reciprocal of y equals 1 is 1. So the secant function will actually be defined whenever x is equal to 0. Secant of 0 is 1. And so the graph of the secant function will start at 0, 1. But as you get closer and closer to x equals pi over 2 from the left side, the graph will increase without bound because the cosine function is actually getting closer to 0 and those reciprocal values will actually increase without bound towards positive infinity. So the graph will be above the x-axis and it will increase without bound the closer you get to the vertical axis, so x equals pi over 2 on the left side. However, on the right side of x equals pi over 2, notice that cosine is actually a negative value. So the reciprocal is actually going to be a negative value that's approaching negative infinity. So secant is actually going to decrease without bound on the right side of x equals pi over 2. And that x equals pi, cosine was actually negative 1. And so the reciprocal of negative 1 is also negative 1. So secant of pi is also negative 1. And so the graph will go no higher than y equals negative 1, which occurs at x equals pi. And then again, because cosine's below the x-axis, those reciprocal values will also be negative, and they'll actually get closer to negative infinity. So the closer you get to x equals 3 pi over 2 from the left side, the graph of the secant function will decrease without bound. And so this is what the graph looks like between x equals pi over 2 and x equals 3 pi over 2. The graph will decrease without bound on the right side of x equals pi over 2, and the graph will also decrease without bound as you get closer to x equals 3 pi over 2 from the left side, and the graph will go no higher than y equals negative 1, which occurs at x equals pi. But then on the right side of x equals 3 pi over 2, the cosine function is positive again, so the reciprocal values will be positive, and the graph will increase without bound the closer you get to x equals 3 pi over 2 from the right side. And then at 2 pi, cosine of 2 pi was 1, so the reciprocal was also 1, so secant of 2 pi is 1. So the graph will come down to 2 pi comma 1, and that is one complete period of the secant function between x equals 0 and x equals 2 pi radians. So as we went through the discussion of the cosecant function and the secant function, notice that there was a relationship between the graphs of the cosecant function and its reciprocal, the sine function, and also a relationship between the graph of the secant function and its reciprocal, the cosine function. Now we're going to consider more closely the graph of the function y equals cosecant of x on the interval x between 0 and pi radians, not including x equals 0 and not including x equals pi, because we saw those were vertical asymptotes for the cosecant function. We're going to examine what happens to the values of the function between x equals 0 and x equals pi, because at these values, sine of x was equal to 0. That means that the cosecant function, y equals cosecant of x, is actually an undefined value. And we saw from the graph that the cosecant function actually increases without bound, or approaches positive infinity, as x approaches 0 from the right side. And that was because the sine function was positive. The cosecant function is also positive, but it's going to tend towards positive infinity, the closer you get to the x equals 0 vertical asymptote from the right side. And cosecant of x also approaches positive infinity whenever x approaches x equals pi, from the left side, because I was also a vertical asymptote, and the sine function was positive. So the cosecant function is also positive, and is approaching positive infinity. And so that means x equals 0 and x equals pi were actually vertical asymptotes for the cosecant function. On the interval x values between pi and 2 pi, the graph is sketched for the same way for the cosecant function. The values of the cosecant function on that interval are the same as those in the interval 0 to pi, except for the sine of the values. We saw that the sine function was actually below the x-axis between x equals pi and x equals 2 pi, so that means that the cosecant function was actually decreasing without bound on the right side of x equals pi, and also decreasing without bound as x approaches 2 pi from the left side. And so the complete graph is now obtained from the fact that the cosecant function is periodic with a period of 2 pi radians. 
And so this is the graph of the cosecant function, y equals cosecant of x. Recall that there are vertical asymptotes at x equals k pi, where k is an integer. So you have vertical asymptote at x equals negative pi, x equals 0 pi or 0, and x equals pi, and so on. Every multiple of pi, you have a vertical asymptote at x equals k times pi, where k is an integer. And so this is what the cosecant function actually looks like between x equals negative pi and x equals pi, which is one complete period for the cosecant function, which is two pi radians. The graph will be below the x-axis between x equals negative pi and x equals zero. You have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative pi, and the graph will decrease without bound on the right side of x equals negative pi. And you have a vertical asymptote at x equals zero, and the graph will decrease without bound on the left side of x equals zero. But the graph will go no higher than y equals negative one, which occurs at x equals negative pi over two, because sine of negative pi over two would is equal to negative 1, and the reciprocal of negative 1 is also negative 1. So cosecant of negative pi over 2 is negative 1. Then on the right side of x equals 0, because the sine function is positive between x equals 0 and x equals pi, the cosecant function will also be above the x-axis, and the graph will increase without bound on the right side of x equals 0. And on the left side of x equals pi, the graph will also increase without bound. And because sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1, the cosecant function will go no lower than y equals 1 at x equals pi over 2. So this actually completes one complete period for the cosecant function, which was 2 pi radians. The graph of the secant function is sketched in a similar way. Observe that the domain of the secant function is the set of all real numbers except for odd multiples of pi over 2, or in other words, x equals k pi over 2, where k is an odd integer, because you have vertical asymptotes for the graph of the secant function at those x values. So this is what a complete graph of the secant function will look like, because the period of the secant function is also 2 pi radians. The graph of y equals secant of x will have vertical asymptotes at x equals k pi over 2, where k is an odd integer. So you have vertical asymptotes at x equals pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, and so on. x equals negative pi over 2, x equals negative 3 pi over 2, and so on. So since the secant function has a period of 2 pi radians, we can graph any length of 2 pi radians, and that will be the pattern that the secant function will repeat forever to the right and also forever to the left. And so let's look at x equals negative pi over 2 to x equals 3 pi over 2. That is a length of 2 pi radians that is one complete period of the secant function. So x equals negative pi over 2, there's a vertical asymptote. Because the cosine function is positive between x equals negative pi over 2 and x equals positive pi over 2, the secant function will also be above the x-axis or positive values, and so the graph will increase without bound on the right side of x equals negative pi over 2, and also increase without bound on the left side of x equals pi over 2. And the graph will go no lower than y equals 1, which occurs at x equals 0. However, between x equals pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, the cosine function is negative. So that means that the secant function will also be negative. It will be below the x-axis. So that means that the graph will decrease without bound on the right side of x equals pi over 2. And also the graph of the secant function decreases without bound on the left side of x equals 3 pi over 2. And the graph will go no higher than y equals negative 1 because secant of pi was equal to negative 1. And so this actually completes one complete period of the secant function, which was 2 pi radians. It'll be this same pattern every 2 pi radians as you continue to the right and also as you continue to the left on the graph. So notice that the graphs of the tangent, the cotangent functions we talked about in the previous video, and also the cosecant function are actually symmetric with respect to the origin, which means that the tangent function, the cotangent function, and the cosecant functions are actually odd functions. On the other hand, the secant function is actually symmetric with respect to the y-axis, so the secant function is actually an even function. So now let's talk about graphs of transformations of the cosecant and secant function. We've already seen that the cosecant and secant functions are the reciprocals of the sine and cosine functions respectively. Now we're going to use a following result that's similar for the sine and cosine function curves. So the definition, period of cosecant and secant curves, the functions y equals a times cosecant of kx and y equals a times the function secant of kx, where k is a positive number, will have a period that is 2 pi divided by k. So if you multiply by k inside the argument of the cosecant or secant functions, you actually affect the period of the secant and cosecant functions, which means that the period will now be 2 pi divided by k rather than just 2 pi, like cosecant and secant would be if it was just x for the cosecant and secant functions. So since we're multiplying the cosecant function by a and the secant function by a, the amplitude of the cosecant and secant curves will actually be the absolute value of a. And since the argument of the cosecant and the argument of the secant functions is not x, it's k times x, the period will be affected, and the period will now be x values between 0 and 2 pi divided by k instead. So let's finish up this video by talking about example 2. Graphing cosecant and secant curves. Determine the amplitude, the period, and the horizontal shift for the following cosecant and secant curves, and then graph one complete period of the function with key points labeled. Number 1, y equals cosecant of 2x. So since we're multiplying the cosecant function by 1, the amplitude will be the absolute value of 1, which is equal to 1. Now the period of the function will be affected because it's not just cosecant of x, it's cosecant of 2x. So that means that the k is 2, 
so the period will be 2 pi divided by k, or 2 pi divided by 2, and so the period will be pi. So this is actually a horizontal compression or horizontal shrink by a factor of one half to actually get the graph of y equals cosecant of 2x. So rather than having vertical asymptotes that x equals multiples of pi for the cosecant function, because the period is now pi radians, you'll have vertical asymptotes that x equals k pi divided by 2, where k is an integer now. So you have a vertical asymptote x equals 0, x equals pi over 2, x equals pi, x equals 3 pi over 2, and so on. Every pi radians, the graph will actually repeat. So we'll actually graph only one complete period. So we'll go between x equals 0 and x equals pi. So on the right side of x equals 0, the graph will increase without bound. And also on the left side of x equals pi over 2, you also will increase without bound. And so the graph will go no lower than whenever x equals pi over 4, the graph will go no lower than y equals 1. So this is what the graph looks like between x equals 0 and x equals pi over 2. The graph will increase without bound on the right side of x equals 0, the graph will increase without bound on the left side of x equals pi over 2, and the graph will go no lower than y equals 1, which occurs at x equals pi over 4. However, between x equals pi over 2 and x equals pi, the graph will actually be below the x-axis. The graph will decrease without bound on the right side of x equals pi over 2, the graph will decrease without bound on the left side of x equals pi, and the graph will go no higher than y equals negative 1, which occurs at x equals 3 pi over 4. So this is actually one complete period of the function y equals cosecant of 2x. And so the graph will continue to the same pattern every pi radians. Number 2, let's graph the function y equals cosecant of the quantity 2x plus pi divided by 2. So notice it's not just x that's inside the parentheses, you have a 2 times x, and it's also being added with pi over 2. So we need to rewrite this function so we can identify the k and also identify the horizontal shift. So let's factor out the 2 from both terms as inside the parentheses, or inside the argument of the cosecant function. So we'll have cosecant of 2 will be factored out from both terms, so 2 times the quantity x plus pi over 4, because if you factor out 2 from 2x, you'll have an x left over, and if you factor out a 2 from pi over 2, you'll have a pi over 4, because 2 times pi over 4 will actually give you pi divided by 2. So now let's find out what is the amplitude, period, and horizontal shift for this function's graph. So notice that the cosecant function is being multiplied by 1, so the amplitude will be the absolute value of 1, which is 1 in this case. The k is equal to 2, so the period will be 2 pi divided by k, or 2 pi divided by 2, which will be equal to pi. So the graph will repeat its same pattern every pi radians, because that's one complete period. And notice that inside the parentheses it's not just x, it's x plus pi over 4, so this is a horizontal shift left pi over 4 units. Notice if you want to graph this function, you're going to have vertical asymptotes at x equals pi over 4, x equals 3 pi over 4, x equals 5 pi over 4, x equals 7 pi over 4, and so on as you go to the right, and also x equals negative pi over 4, x equals negative 3 pi over 4, and so on as you go to the left. So we're going to graph one complete period, which is pi radians. So let's go between negative pi over 4 and also 3 pi over 4. That will be one complete period. So on the right side of x equals negative pi over 4, the graph will increase without bound, and also on the left side of x equals positive pi over 4, which is also a vertical asymptote, the graph will increase without bound. And the graph will go no lower than the point 0, 1. The graph will be this shape between x equals negative pi over 4, which is a vertical asymptote, and x equals positive pi over 4, which is also a vertical asymptote. However, on the right side of x equals pi over 4, and on the left side of x equals 3 pi over 4, the graph will be this shape. The graph will decrease without bound on the right side of x equals pi over 4, and the graph will also decrease without bound on the left side of x equals 3 pi over 4, and the graph will go no higher than the point pi over 2 comma negative 1. And so this actually completes one complete period for our graph of y equals cosecant of 2x plus pi over 2. The graph will just repeat the same pattern as you go to the right and as you go to the left forever. Let's try one more. Number 3, y equals 3 times secant of the quantity 1 half x. So this time we're multiplying the secant function by 3, so the amplitude will be the absolute value of 3, or 3. And now the period is also affected because the k is 1 half. The period will be 2 pi divided by k, which will be 2 pi divided by 1 half. And if you multiply by the reciprocal, you'll get 4 pi. So the graph will actually repeat the same pattern. Not every 2 pi radians, it'll actually repeat every 4 pi radians. And there is no horizontal shift for this graph because we're not adding or subtracting inside the argument of the secant function. So if you want to graph this function y equals 3 times secant of 1 half x, notice you're going to have vertical asymptotes of the form x equals k times pi, where k is an odd integer. So you'll have x equals negative pi, x equals positive pi, x equals 3 pi, x equals 5 pi, x equals 7 pi, and so on, as you go to the right, and also as you go to the left. Now since the amplitude was 3, the graph will go no lower than 0, 3 and go no higher than 2 pi, negative 3, because the graph has a vertical stretch by a factor of 3 in this case. So again, we're going to graph one complete period, which will be 4 pi radians this time. So we'll graph between x equals negative pi and x equals 3 pi. 
because x equals negative pi is a vertical asymptote, and x equals 3 pi was also a vertical asymptote, and that is 4 pi radians in length. So on the right side of x equals negative pi, the graph will increase without bound, and on the left side of x equals pi, the graph will increase without bound, and the graph will go no lower than the point 0, 3. So this is what the shape of the graph will look like between x equals negative pi and x equals positive pi, between those two vertical asymptotes. However, between x equals pi and x equals 3 pi, the graph will be below the x-axis, the graph will decrease without bound on the right side of x equals pi, and also on the left side of x equals 3 pi, the graph will decrease without bound. And the graph will go no higher than the point 2 pi comma negative 3. And so this actually completes one complete period, or a length of 4 pi radians, for the graph of y equals 3 times secant of 1 half x. The graph will have this same pattern every 4 pi radians, as you continue to the right, and also as you continue to the left. So this finishes our video on graphing the cosecant and secant functions. We talked about how to analyze the graph of the secant and cosecant functions, and we also talked about how to use transformations to graph variations of the secant and cosecant functions. If you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you in the next video when we talk about inverse trigonometric functions and their graphs.